How's it going everybody? It's Ricardo back with another video. Today we're going to be unboxing the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Nintendo Switch, let me give you a quick rundown of what it is. The Nintendo Switch is Nintendo's newest video game console that promises to be the solution for gaming at home and on the go. As you can see here, I have the gray Nintendo Switch and then I also have the Nintendo Switch that comes with the neon red and blue Joy-Con controllers. We also have a couple of accessories that we can unbox as well. We have the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and we also have the Nintendo branded Nintendo Switch case. All right, so let's put these aside and let's see what we got. Nintendo did a really good job with keeping the package uh, nice and slim and sleek. We have here the Nintendo Switch console itself and then we also have the Joy-Con controllers, uh, both left and the right controller. Man, these are, these are a lot smaller in person than they, than they look on pictures and in other people's hands. Now what's interesting about the Joy-Con controllers is that Nintendo designed the system with multiplayer in mind from the very beginning. So although you can slide these into the Nintendo Switch and have uh, basically a full controller with these two halves, they actually each function and operate as their own controllers. So in the event that you were playing, let's say Mario Kart, and you went to a restaurant with some friends, or maybe you went over to a friend's house, you can just slide off the controllers, hand one to your friend, and go ahead and continue playing like this. Now, it's not the most ideal situation for playing games for long periods of time, um, but if you're trying to get just a couple minutes in, maybe 30 minutes, and just play some multiplayer gaming, it's a lot better than the alternative of having to carry around a second controller with you, considering that this guy was designed not only to be played at home, but on the go as well. So we're gonna go ahead and put these two aside. Let's get rid of the plastic here, magic, make it disappear. Alrighty. Now this is the meat and potatoes right here. This is the Nintendo Switch itself. The whole console right here in this nice and slim uh, package right here. Just, man, this definitely feels uh, premium. It does not feel plasticky or cheap at all. Uh, you can see there that the screen just feels really, really nice. The, the switch itself, uh, it does have a little bit of heft to it, um, but it, do it doesn't feel heavy by any means. It just, the heft that it does have makes it feel premium, makes it feel like an iPad or so. The design on here is very, very nice. Uh, everything is a matte black uh, metal finish. And at the top, we have here a power button. We have here the volume buttons. And then we also have the vent right here for circulation and ventilation uh, of the heat from the system. Following that, we have a headphone jack, and then here's the game card slot. On the bottom, we have the USB-C port, which will allow the switch to charge and be docked. So we're gonna go ahead and slide in the Joy-Con so we can set this aside real quick. And I'll do it this way so you can see it. These guys just slide in. It's a nice click right there. That feels really, really nice. It definitely feels, at least for me, I'm, I'm a very big Nintendo fan, and uh, this definitely feels like a next generation Nintendo console. Now the Nintendo Switch comes with 32 gigabytes of built-in storage. However, if you decide to purchase a lot of games digitally, that storage is gonna get filled up pretty quickly. So you wanna expand your storage with a micro SD card and Although there's not in existence right now, the Nintendo Switch will support micro SD cards of up to two terabytes in storage space. Second layer in the box we have right here, looks like we have the HDMI cable. Then we also have the power adapter. All right, next up we have here the Joy-Con straps. Uh, this is one right here. The system does come with two of these. Now what these are gonna do for you is if you're playing a multiplayer game where you would slide out the, the Joy-Con controllers from the dock, you can go ahead and match up the plus symbol to the plus symbol and slide this on the Joy-Con controller as so. This allows for better comfort when using the controller sideways independently. It also um, gives you an extension for the shoulder buttons as well as it mirrors the LED lights so you know what player you are. These also lock into place so you can go ahead and strap this around your wrist. So if you're playing a game that requires motion and things like that, you don't want the controller to fly out your hand and hit your TV or hit someone else. Next up, we have 
what looks to be the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con grip. Now this little guy right here is a grip that's built to provide more comfort when you're using the Joy-Con controllers. You can slide these into the Joy-Con grip, which is basically just a plastic shell for uh, your Joy-Con controller. So you slide it on like this, provide that same nice click as when you slide it onto the Switch itself. And now you have a traditional controller. Now a lot of people do think this looks like a little puppy face. I agree it does, but that just adds to the allure of that Nintendo charm. And last but not least, after we get through some paperwork here that we'll read later, uh, we can get to the Nintendo Switch dock. And here it is, the Nintendo Switch dock. Again, like the Switch itself, like the Joy-Con controllers, um, this does feel like a premium product. So the Nintendo Switch dock is gonna allow you to dock the console and continue playing on your TV. On the back, we can see that there is a little door right here and we can open this guy. The door is hiding an HDMI port, a USB port, and the AC adapter plug. Now what's cool about this is that this little door will provide you that extra cable management. Um, so you can go ahead and slide all your cables in, close this out, and then your cables will loop out here through the back or through the side. Okay, so we've unpacked the AC power adapter, the HDMI cable, the Nintendo Switch dock, the Joy-Con grip and the Joy-Con controllers, the Joy-Con straps, and the Nintendo Switch itself. So let's go ahead and put this to a side, and we're gonna take a look at what the neon blue and neon red Joy-Con controllers look like. Okay, so here we have the Nintendo Switch, neon blue Joy-Con controller, and neon red. Man, the, the camera really doesn't do it justice. Um, in person, the neon red, I thought it would be more along the lines of the red that's on the Nintendo Switch box. Um, I don't know if, if you can see on camera clearly. It, it's a really, really bright shade of red. Um, the blue does look very nice though. Uh, I definitely could see uh, myself with the Nintendo Switch where maybe both controllers were blue. At the end of the day, <laughs> I personally don't care. Um, the more I think about it, the more it's like, I just wanna jump in and play some Zelda. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these next accessories that we have here. Okay, so first up, we have the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Um, this controller is gonna be available for $69.99. So let's go ahead and open this guy. So right here we have uh, the USB-A to USB-C cable and this will get plugged in on the side of the dock. Um, on the dock itself, it has the two USB ports on the side, so you can just plug that in, and then you can charge this guy up. You can also play with it while it's being charged. Um, but again, the battery is 40 hours. So, uh, first impressions, it does feel like an Xbox One controller. Um, the grip does feel comfortable. Again, quality materials. It is matte black, a matte finish, which again, the Wii U Pro Controller was a glossy black finish that was very, very ugly. Uh, but this is a matte black finish, definitely feels nice. Right off the bat, I can tell that the buttons are much larger than the Joy-Con uh, controllers. You can see here, the joysticks themselves are much larger as well. And then we also have a regular D-pad, going back to the traditional style of uh, controllers. Now this controller is probably gonna be more comfortable for playing for longer periods of time, uh, along with basically double the battery life of the Joy-Con controllers. This controller also has uh, built-in support for Amiibo. Now moving along, we have here the Nintendo Switch uh, case. All right, so this is a screen protector. Um, I'm sure the blue that's on there is the plastic. I'm sure the screen protector is not blue. So that's cool, I'll definitely put that on there. And then we have the case right here. Magic. So uh, this feels nice. Um, it has a pleathery sort of fake leather feel. Uh, and then you can see it has the Nintendo Switch logo. We open it up. Inside we'll find a, a spot 
with an indentation that uh, looks like it's right here for the Nintendo Switch to lay down in. And then we also have this flap here that uh, has some bags here to store the game cards. I'll get a close up look so you guys can see that. As well as a pocket for extra storage. This case was actually $20 and for for $20 you're getting a case to store your games, to keep your Switch protected, to travel with, and you're also getting a screen protector. Um, so I think that's not a bad deal. There are plenty of other third-party cases and other Nintendo branded cases as well uh, that vary from anywhere from $10 to $30. So you can check those out online. Um, but I think this is pretty cool. I look forward to using this. All right, so next I'm gonna plug everything in, get it all set up just to give you an idea of what it looks like when you're playing in docked TV mode or when you're playing in handheld mode. After powering on the Nintendo Switch, the unit will walk you through some system settings for your location and your internet connection. Then you can insert your game card and begin the game. It took less than five minutes from when I first turned on the Switch to when I was able to start playing The Legend of Zelda. Switching between handheld mode and docked mode could not be easier. The Nintendo Switch reacts almost instantaneously when you dock the system. And the same is true when you're ready to go. Playing at home and time is running up, you can go ahead, slide on the Joy-Con controllers onto the unit, and pick up and continue playing on the go. While The Legend of Zelda is a power hungry game, which will only give you about two and a half to three hours of battery life on the go, other games can see increased battery as far as up to six hours. Getting my hands on it uh, for the first time and seeing it, it, it definitely has a level of polish that Nintendo has not had in the past. Only time will tell, but so far, Nintendo looks to have gotten things started off on the right foot. So what did you think about the Nintendo Switch? Did you pick one up at launch? Are you planning on getting one in the future? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching this video. If you liked the video, feel free to hit a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to click subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one.